Hi, we're here with one of the stars of today's Shorty Awards, uh, Chris Hardwick. Tell us. Uh, I'm just a presenter. I'm not a star <laughs> of the awards. But something fun happened for the people who missed it. Uh, I was told you were assaulted in a very friendly manner. Yes, I was assaulted in a, in, a, in a somewhat friendly manner. There was a woman who kept shouting out the name of the show that I host, uh -huh. and she was really rambunctious, aka drunk. But it was fine because she had a lot of energy. And so afterwards, I'm like, oh, it'd be really funny if I go down and give her a hug. And I went to give her a hug, and she grabbed me, and she was way stronger than she looked, and would not let go, and her friend got a picture, and I started to get up, and then she yanked back down again, and she was way stronger than I am. I was overpowered. You need to be working out more, clearly. I really do need to be working out more, but I'm going to go back, and then she and I are going <laughs> to face off uh, in, a, in, a, in a title bout. Or 2014, Shorty. She's going to beat the crap out of me. Tell us about your life on social media. You're doing so many interesting projects. Uh, you occasionally write journalism work, sure. but, but you are doing so much more. Yes, uh, I, I I used to be a little bit more of a regular contributor to Wired, but now I kind of I do it when if there's a really special story that comes along. There was just I did I was in the Star Wars issue, uh, and so I wrote a story about the Star Wars expanded uh, universe. But um, and but you I, think it's going to be a good movie, and you think it's going to be an awesome movie? Right? I do actually, because I think what you're going to see now are people like J.J. Abrams, who are you know big time directors with experience who are basically going to make really high budget fan fi films. So you're gonna see guys make the Star Wars films that they always wanted, that it probably ins drove them to be directors. Now they're gonna get to do those things. So I think, I think JJ's gonna do a good job. Well, they can't be worse than the prequels, especially that, you know, that fourth movie, which was uh, awful. Well, the I, Phantom I, Menace was so bad. I just, I, just think that, I just think that JJ's a good, he's a good guy, and he made a good Star Trek movie, and he wasn't even really a fan of the Ch Star Trek series, but he is actually a fan of Star Wars. So I, I'm 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 really excited about but that. But isn't it true that growing up, Star Wars and Star Trek people didn't get along? So this is kind of bending the universe a little bit. There's some there's some crossover. There's some crossover. Yeah, the, but but I de definitely the har the hardcore people are are certainly polarized. But that but I think there's I think there's a healthy amount of crossover. Well, tell me about your other projects. Okay, so I run I, I'm a chief creative officer of this company called Nerdist Industries, which I founded, um, and it started as a blog, and then it turned into a bigger blog, and then a podcast network, and then a YouTube channel, and then a TV show, and so now we're producing a few TV shows, and we're about to start producing films, and um, so yeah, we just make a lot of stuff. What can people watch for on TV or on the web? Uh, YouTube.com slash Nerdist. Uh, Nerdist is pretty much the name of everything. It's a Facebook, Google+, Twitter, Instagram. Um, and I host a show called Talking Dead, which is follows The Walking Dead. And we just talk about The Walking Dead. That's literally all we do. And then, uh, and then The Nerdist is a TV show on BBC America. So, And what are it. your tips for people who are in the creative business and want to use social media but haven't quite figured it out? They might look at you and say, well, he's got millions of followers. That's why he's successful. When it's actually... Always. Yeah. Talk yeah. About that. Uh, well, I always say I think it's important with social media not to try to fish the waters too much. Like, if you, like, remember that you're building a community. You're not just trying to get people to buy stuff. You know what I mean? And I think it's a slightly different philosophical shift. You have to remember that you're a part, you're one piece of a puzzle, and it can't all be about you. So you have to feed the community sometimes and share things that don't have anything to do with your business. Like, just share things that are that are enriching to the community. And I think that's helpful. But I think people look at it as a way to, oh, yeah, how can I make money off this? And that's, a, that's not a good way to approach social media. I like to tell my students, if you won't do it for free, then you won't do it for exactly. all the, all what the, you, the, the One of the most important things is, you know, when you're looking at whether or not you should do something, take money out of the equation. Would you do it anyway? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is yes, you're probably doing the right thing. And if it's no, then you're probably just taking a paycheck and wasting everyone's time and what is, what are your tips for people who are trying to do this and have hit a plateau what can you know they do all the right things and then just find themselves not making an impact or not able to kind of put food on the table because they're they haven't found a way to monetize social uh, well I mean I, I would say look at the content I mean I think content is really content is the king of everything now it's like it's bigger than networks it's bigger than infrastructure it's like one single video one piece of good content supersedes anything so look at your content are you are, are you making content that you actually care about or are you passionate about your content is there something you can do to make it more unique is there is there something you can try sometimes i think when you get back into a corner that's where the best that's where some of the best stuff happens because you kind of go into fight into fight mode, you know. So don't be afraid to fail, and just figure out how to uh, learn from those mistakes and and you know, I, I guess swing hard. Just just swing hard and fast. And uh, well, and we also just want to don't prejudge. By the way, can I say this? Yeah. Do not don't 
a lot of creators will sit down and they'll start to do something and go, no, that's dumb. Just do it. Do it and then judge it. You know what I mean? Just get it out. Because it's so much easier to do it than in the old days. You can just do it. Right? You, you can just do it, yeah. The cost there's, of there's, doing it is so little. There's no excuse anymore. There's, you can do anything you want. And we can't talk about social media and the shorties and tonight without thinking of Roger Ebert, who sure. was great at kind of bridging old media and social media. I mean, he, he touched, he literally touched every medium. I mean, film, television, uh, uh, so, you know, digital media. Uh, he was, uh, <laughs> the print media. I mean, he was, he really was, a, you know, a king of, of media, and he seemed to embrace it all uh, enthusiastically. And you know, when he first had when he first had complications, he didn't just ball up and say, "Screw the world, I'm not gonna." Like he went to social media and he wrote, and people love him. And and it's it's a shame. It's a shame that he's gone. He was really great. Well, thanks very much. Thank and you good so luck. Much. Shorty Awards, 2013. <laughs> Let's play in 2014. Come yes, on. All right. I'm not going to leave till then.